So picture this, it was three weeks ago and I'd just come out of the great chasm of suffering excruciatingly and I realised I hadn't caught up with any of the spring season. That called for one course of action. It's time to do, 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 do. ditch all my social obligations so I can go watch Asian cartoons. And so now I think it's time to make an end of season video where I discuss all the shows that I watched over the past season. Cause no one else does that on this site. On the subject of things that no one else does, let's talk about My Hero Academia Season 3. We were all wondering if the show would go downhill, considering the last season was so good that it caused some people to think that the animation was somehow better than a silent voice. Yeah, I'm still unsure about how that was allowed to happen. However, I'm very glad to say that as it stands now, the season is shaping up to be even greater than previous seasons, but in a different way to what we expected. Now, the season started off with what appeared to be another villains attack students kind of arc, but this time it's my hero, Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> but they actually gave us a curveball in this arc by introducing a darker tone to the series and a focus on characters instead of fights, with the series breaking away from Shonen to become more of an action drama. Man, I, I totally didn't rip that statement off from Gigguk. How about I rephrase it with a shitty allegory about fast food restaurants? So. My Hero Academia is to Shonen as Nando's is to fast food restaurants. Basically, both are associated with the larger groups due to a surface level similarity in content. However, when inspected in closer detail, the quality of what is produced by these things equates to more than what they are being compared to. However, due to the comparisons being made with them and the less refined things they are being compared to, it attracts the kind of people who enjoy the less refined things. Wait, does this make Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood GBK? Does this make solely to Five Guys and this is where the comparison ends. The pre-existing characters are doing very well with some of their interactions are some of the best things I've heard all season. My quirk transforms lipids into brand new atoms to create inorganic materials. That means the more I eat, the more I can make. I like how poop works. There's also a surprising amount of new additions to the cast in this season, including Scar from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Len from that Sword Art Online thing that's supposedly alright, and Parappa the Rapper for some reason. They all better be in one's justice. But my favourite character this season has to be Himiko Toga, because of that blush of hers and her expressive attitude, I think she deserves the title of New Best Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fucking morons, nothing can replace her. This is shaping up to be the best season of My Hero Academia yet, but could you guys not make it so that it wins everything at the Crunchyroll Awards this year? That would be nice. Next up, we have Hina Matsuri. Every now and again, we have a series that reminds us of what's pure in the world, and Hina Matsuri gives us this experience. It captures such wholesome moments as a father and daughter bonding over a visit to a strip club, or a teenager's first experience being a barmaid, and... Wait, that isn't wholesome? Don't care, because somehow Hinamatsuri makes it charming. Hinamatsuri tells the story of a Yakuza member called Nita, who suddenly has to look after a psychic little girl called Hina, who mysteriously appears out of a portal. This means that Hinamatsuri joins recreates in the subgenre that involves characters coming from a fantasy world into the real world, that I dub Risekai. Sorry about that, mispronounced it. <clears throat> it's actually... Re colon Sekai. Well, it's actually a comedy, and one of the funniest at that, but I was surprised to see how much it managed to have some interesting character development. I like seeing Nita go from hardened Yakuza to Best Dad 2018, Anzu go from Cherokee Hanazawa from Mob Psycho 100 to Must Protect. I also like seeing Hina go from to... Okay, she doesn't change all that much, but I can recommend this series to everyone, because if you like to laugh, you'll love this show. But you're watching my content, so you might not like to laugh. Either way, this show is charming as balls. Go watch it. Now let's visit a parallel universe where I could come up with a transition in Steins Gate Zero, or as I call it, Steins Gate. Okay, while I'm normally all for yelling there is no god, you've got to put it with stimulus that proves there is no god. For example... As I mentioned in my last video, I finally watched Steins Gate recently, so this series has come out at the right time for me, although this comes at the cost of acquiring a crippling fear of hearing a small child yell Mayushi Ne San Tuturu every time I'm getting the train. Also, spoilers for the original Steins Gate, I'll leave a timestamp in the description for those who want to skip this. 
Steins Gate Zero follows a dark alternate path, where anyone's likeness can be made into a sticker for an iPhone, and Okabe fails to save Kurisu and has fallen into a depression so deep he buys respectable clothes. However, when he's given an app that contains Kurisu's memory data, this leads him to multiple other agencies that all want the AI for themselves. I mean, if I had an AI that acts completely like Kurisu, I'd keep that to myself. No one else can have my science waifu. Now, there's less narrative driving force behind this season, but they make back up for it with character interaction. All the characters actually feel useful within the entirety of the plot, unlike the original Steins Gate where the secondary characters feel like they're only there so Okabe can try and time travel Ruka's penis back into existence. We also get some new characters, such as Yuki, the person who will eventually become Suzuha's mother, which leads to some interesting moments, to say the least. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I would also give a verdict if Maho is new best girl, but I feel I might be able to make a video on this subject somewhere down the line. So, until that happens, let's talk about the surprise hit this season. Megalobox surprised me, and I'm surprised that it surprised me considering Devilman Crybaby came out last season having a tone similar to that of a 1980s anime. Even then I didn't expect a series that not only emulated the tone of an anime from years past, those years being the late 90s, but also the fact it emulated the series artistically. Megalobox reminds us of a time where the heart and soul of anime was badasser and nothing else. It was a time when they didn't fuck around with that feelings BS, just hardened badass dudes punching or shooting the crap out of their problems. Megalobox tells the story of Junk Dog, a boxer who stages fights alongside his coach Nanbu. However, when Junk Dog runs into Yuri, the top boxer around, he decides he's going to fight his way up the league to become champion. This is the first sports anime I've watched, and I assume the last, because if a sports anime has to be this good in order to impress me, then my standards are way too high for other shows. But until the day when you can find another sports anime with this much raw high octane energy while well, having an animation style that reminds me of Bebop, a kick-ass hip-hop soundtrack, then Megalobox is gonna reign supreme till the end of time. But one quick complaint, Junk Dog renames himself to Joe. Why? If you go from a badass name like Junk Dog to Joe, take it from me, if you want to change your name from something that looks unprofessional, like say, Meta Knuckles 1642, what you do is you rename yourself to something equally as dumb, but at least it's honest.